How do you generally think about supplementation? I, I would guess that generally we want to get everything we can get from Whole Foods and from our diet. But how do you think about which particular nutrients are most useful to supplement uh, versus which are, are, are not? Which are you just not going to get what you need from a supplement? Great question. Because it's really important people are aware that certain supplemental ingredients are potentially dangerous and cancer-promoting. And traditional multivitamins have those cancer-promoting ingredients in them, you know. I do make my own um, line of supplements so people aren't taking those things in supplemental form. And my line is designed for people who are eating relatively healthy diets. So I'm not giving them stuff like that they need that they're just because they're not eating any vegetables and fruits. You know what I mean? But in general, the answer to your question is that folic acid is not the same compound as folate found in vegetables and beans. And when you eat a diet with lots of beans and vegetables in it, you get tons of folate so that your blood level is even up above the normal range even in many cases, right? And the conventional authorities are telling women of childbearing age to take folic acid to prevent neural tube defects. And I'm saying that there's an overwhelming amount of evidence in the scientific literature that folic acid supplementation increases the risk of breast and prostate cancer. It's a synthetic compound. It doesn't exist in nature. It's not the same thing as folate in real food. And, it le and the cells can't keep it outside the cell when it doesn't need it. And it needs, leads to excessive cellular replication and is a cancer promoter. And that we have people that are taking folic acid driving increased risk of cancer. And, it's, and you should be getting your folate from vegetables and beans and not from taking folic acid, even if, uh, even if childbearing age. It's completely, and I'm making this radical claim, and nobody's talking about this except me. I'm saying this viewpoint of conventional medical and health authorities is driving an epidemic of childhood cancer as well because women instead of eating vegetables to get folate, are taking folic acid and not eating vegetables. And the lack of vegetables in the diet, not only during pregnancy, but even years prior to conception, is linked to increased risk of acute blastocytic leukemia, the leading cause of cancer death in children. So the cancer in children is affected by the mother's poor diet, including, by the way, brain tumors in children. When you have a child with a brain tumor at age 12, it's affected by what you ate before you conceived the baby even. So, and those are linked to not just the lack of green vegetables in the diet, but also the consumption of luncheon meats and processed meats that affect the woman's having a baby that at age two or three gets cancer, right? So you're not only, you're not only causing yourself to get cancer with processed meats like bologna and salami and pastrami and hot dogs and bacon, you're not just increasing your risk of cancer, but if your eggs are in your body as a woman, and maybe even to a certain degree the sperm as well for a male, you're damaging your genes that you can pass on to the future generations. That's how dangerous these foods are. So instead, what does our population do? Instead of advising people to eat vegetables for folate and, and watch the consumption of luncheon meats, instead, we tell them to take folic acid, the synthetic supplements, because people are low in folate in their diet. It was the, we a lost opportunity, right? Okay, likewise, to finish that question, is that Vitamin A, meaning acetyl palmitate and retinol palmitate, has been shown to be linked to osteoporosis and increase all-cause mortality and increase cancer deaths as well. It's better to get your vitamin A elevated because you're eating a lot of different carotenoids and the body can make the amount of vitamin A it needs from the wide spectrum of carotenoids you eat in colorful plants. The minute you start taking vitamin A in excess, a synthetic supplement for it, you could be overgoing, over taking too much of that compound. Instead of your body making enough, you get excessive amounts. That doesn't mean vitamin A and folic acid might be good in a person who's starving or gets no nutrients or is eating just junk food or, you know what I mean? But, for, but generally speaking, they are major factors driving cancer. And people should not be supplementing with vitamin A. And they shouldn't be supplementing with vitamin E either, for that matter. Because vitamin E has too many different fag fragments and by t supplementing with just one fragment, you could be blocking the absorption of another fragment. The same reason we saw beta carotene supplements increased risk of lung cancer and heart disease risk, because when people were taking beta carotene, as opposed to eating vegetables for, beta for carotenoids, you don't get the absorption of the full symphony, the full spectrum of all the carotenoids. When you take a lot of just one type, it can interfere with absorption of the other types, and it's exposure to the w wide variety of these phytonutrients that extends human lifespan, not to take one isolated nutrient in a high amount. So yes, it's that um, we're talking about getting our nutrients predominantly from food with the full biological spectrum present, 
because there are multiple vitamin E fragments, there are multiple carotenoid fragments, there's lutein and lycopene and cryptoxanthine and exanth. Now we know that there's all these different, um, different fragments. And then, so it's, yeah, we wanna get our nutrients from food, and then the question is, okay, once you're on this diet where you're getting a wide amount of these nutrient levels from food, are there any individual nutrients that can be added to that to extend human lifespan and prevent shrinkage of the brain, shrinkage of the immune system, shrinkage of the bones, things that happen as we age, it's natural to get to weaken your bones, weaken your muscles, weaken your brain, weaken your immune system. People die, they don't live forever. And yes, getting a little extra zinc as we age can prevent weakening of the immune system and weakening of the brain, and a little extra DHA can prevent that, and a little extra, so paying attention to plant protein to prevent, to making sure so we don't get too much hormones promoting growth, but too little can also be a problem too. We wanna to be in that sweet spot, right? So then yes, paying a little more uh, attention to these things to make sure we're in the beneficial range with those with s supplementing conservatively. We know, for example, that certain compounds like the EGCG in green tea and extracts from multiple mushrooms and the, ex the curcumins found in turmeric and black turmeric. And we know that there are certain compounds in plants that we don't generally eat all the time. And supplementing with some of those has powerful anti-cancer effects to extend human lifespan. So we've taken nutritional science to a higher level of kind of perfectionism to instruct people to how they could really use the scientific information for their own body's protection and to extend human lifespan. How do you recommend the average person navigate these kinds of questions? So, you know, one of the things I'm hearing from you is, uh, again, sort of context matters when you're thinking about your diet, where some of that supplementation might be helpful, what kinds of things you should be increasing. Um, if I get back a set of blood test results and I've got my nutrients and they're the various things and I'm committed to cleaning up my diet in some way, how do you recommend, what do folks do? Do they go read a book? Do they go try to work with the nutritionist? Do they take it to their GP and say, here, give me some advice? I don't know. I mean, really, most people, most doctors and nutritionists are inadequate to answer these questions. You know, I, I write books and people can read my books. They can come to my website and ask me questions. But there are, like I mentioned earlier, there is a board certification for doctors specializing in nutrition and lifestyle medicine called the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, ACLM. And they can look up for doctors who have at least certified or board certified in ACLM to help advise them. You know, because you get all kinds of people with opinions and crazy opinions out there. So I would say, you know, at least stick with somebody who's, sort of, who's ACLM associated physician and there's 8,000 of those doctors across the country, you know. Yeah, that's really helpful. It's a question we get a lot is how do I find somebody who's going who's gonna to put forward the sort of lifestyle focus? Yeah, right, a, life, a good lifestyle, which includes not just food. It includes, you know, having ha good emotions and sleeping and, and exercising and not being exposed to pollution. And as we were doing, we're trying to live as healthily as we possibly can.